The next piece of this page is a carousel. The carousel usually has pictures in the background and you can see that we can cycle through the pictures. It has little indicators at the bottom and all of these pieces are optional. We can just have a carousel that cycles and has no menu, no options, no availability, or you can add more. So looking at the Bootstrap website, we're gonna to go to carousel. Now you can search for carousel up here if you'd like to, or you can go to components and find carousel within there. The way a carousel page works is again, it's cycling usually through pictures or a series of content, and it's using CSS to transform them to give them a little bit of that swiping feel. In addition to that, you can also include those previous and next indicators or controllers and indicators at the bottom to tell you how many there are. An example that you have if you keep scrolling down is like slides only. And over here on the right, you can choose where you're at. So you can click slides only to pop to that. You'll see it go through and every single carousel has only three items in it by default. So we're gonna add four because I wanna show you how you can really customize this. The next option is with controls where they have these side controls and can pop between them. The third option is with indicators and side controls, and you can see the indicators at the bottom. And the last option is also with captions that have labels and captions built in. This is the one we're gonna use, the one with captions. And when we use this, you can see that we can add caption easily by using the caption element inside of a carousel item. When we scroll down, you'll see that there is a very large piece of code that is already created for us. And we're gonna go ahead and copy that. We're gonna to go to Dreamweaver and underneath our nav, so I'm gonna to go to the closing of my nav, the carousel is going to be my header. So I'm gonna go ahead and tab inward and type header here, not in all caps, and let it close my header. And then I'm gonna create some space for this carousel. <laughs> I'm then gonna go in between here, tab inward and paste. And then if you need to, you can take the remainder of the coding that's created inside of that header and tab it in Word. So that we don't get confused, I'm gonna scroll back up and I'm gonna go to nav here and I'm gonna collapse my nav by clicking this little arrow to the left of the opening nav tag. This will collapse all the lines between line 17 and 53 for me, collapsing that nav so I don't get confused. So right now I'm inside my header and I'm inside a div that's a carousel. If you click up here, it should not work because it doesn't know what to grab. And this little icon means, hey, I don't know what picture to put here. So let's go ahead and look through here and see how we can find pictures and replace them with actual pictures. One of the features of every single program you use is to find something. So for instance, if I go back to the Bootstrap website and I hit Control F on my keyboard and I look for crossfade as a word, it's going to find it over here on the left. And then if I click the next arrow, it's going to take me to the next option for crossfade. This is also a feature that is available in any program. So when you hit control F, it opens up a find option usually, and you can look for like IMG, for instance, and it will highlight the image tag. So we can see here that the first image tag inside of the carousel item has a dot, dot, dot for image source. So we're going to replace that. If you keep scrolling down, you can kind of see the different items being inside of boxes. And you might be thinking, man, this is a lot of div tags. Well, most websites are made of a majority of div tags, boxes within boxes within boxes. And it's really hard, but you have to start thinking about these invisible boxes and how they can be controlled. So with this div of the carousel inner, that contains all of the carousel pieces that like are like the pictures and the text. Then inside of that carousel inner, you have a carousel item. Inside that carousel item, you have an image and a caption div. So note you're doing a div and a div. Now when you click on a div what's, or any parent tag, it'll show you the closing and same thing here. So when you're highlighting and selecting things, maybe to like copy and paste, be sure you get the whole thing by clicking on the tag and seeing where it ends and grabbing everything. You can see that each carousel item has an image and a div for that cap caption, and there's three of them all together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the web right now, and we are going to find a new, uh, four pictures of our um, animal. 
So I'm going to search for giraffe here and go to images. When you do this, though, you know you want it to take up the width of the website, however wide that may be. So you need large images. When you are looking at images, they aren't always showing you the largest version or are showing you a large photo at all. So we're going to go to tools right here. We're going to click size and we're going to go to large. And that will make sure you're only seeing large images. You're then going to select preferably landscape photos or wide photos because it's going to take up a wide amount of page and not go tall. So try to stick with that landscape view. You're then going to go ahead and grab that photo, but you want the biggest version you can get. So I'm going to go ahead and open the link in, or open the image in the new tab. So right click the thumbnail and open the image in a new tab. You're going to want to zoom in if there's a zoom in option, and that's when you're going to want to save the image. So right click save image as. Now where you save the image is very important, so pay close attention. We have to be in our example website folder. So I went and found my Digital Design 2 folder, went into my example website folder, and right here, I know if I go to a file explorer window, there's an index file and an EX website styles file. That is what's in here, and I can't see it because I'm currently working on an image and not an HTML or CSS file. We are gonna create a new folder called assets here, and the reason we call this folder assets is because in the world of marketing and design, we call anything we use and bring in and import an asset. A picture, a video, a form, they're all assets that we can, we can then grab from. Inside my assets folder, I'm gonna double click. I'm not, I have nothing in here, but I can see if I go to my file explorer window, I now have an assets folder here. And I'm going to go ahead and name this giraffe one with no spaces and no capitalizations. I also want to make sure that my save as type is either JPEG, PNG, or GIF, and nothing other than that. If it's like a WebP file, it's not going to work. So we're going to hit save, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to find three more images I want to use of a giraffe. So I would go ahead and open these up, zoom in, save them, and I'm going to name this giraffe2 so that I can easily link back to these. I'm gonna go ahead and do like this herd here, open image in a new tab. Oh, that one is small, let me try it one more time. After it loaded, giraffe three, and I'm gonna go one more time to another giraffe photo like this one, and save it as giraffe four. So now I have four images and I'm ready to roll and they're sitting inside that assets folder. Now what we're going to do is bring them into our carousel. So going back to Dreamweaver, I'm going to go to the first image tag. If you need to, you can hit control F again to find image and I'm going to go to the source. I'm going to change this. And the first thing I know that my file needs to do is it needs to go into the assets folder because I'm currently on index and the computer, it's going to look from index right next to it. If it can't find it right next to it, it needs to go somewhere. So the computer needs to know to go into the assets folder and then find the photo. So I'm going to first tell it to go into the assets folder and you'll see that because Dreamweaver is a helpful WYSIWYG, it's going to try and help you out. And you can click on this to say assets backslash and then you can see your different files. If your files aren't in the same location and this is not popping up, you put your folder for assets and your pictures in the wrong spot. So make sure that it is next to and inside the same folder as your index and CSS. Once you get your first photo in there, it should cycle through and give you that as an option and you should see your first photo pop up. In addition to that, there is a class in here that is making it actually take up the width of the page, but then there's an alt tag attribute an alt tag attribute is important for many reasons. First, it tells the computer what to read to a screen reader if somebody is visually impaired. So if somebody can't actually see your website and they are using the computer to read it to them, the screen reader is going to come here, see that it's an image, and look for alt information to read that. So I'm going to go ahead and put giraffe on the plane. 
And what I think is important is that this is not something where you need to um, change what how you type. You can type it just like you would a normal sentence because it's actually what the screen reader is reading. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, the other thing that alt tag does, sorry. The other thing that alt tag does is it makes it so that your, your website is um, more accessible for a, uh, for a search engine optimization. So when Google or yahoo.com or msn.com or Bing are looking through their search engine for your website, by having alt text, the website um, search engine can also read and know what that picture is, which helps you pop up search sooner in search engine results. And that's called search engine optimization is how soon can you be in those results. So the next thing I'm going to go through, and I'm going to keep doing this for each one so that I can go ahead and put in all four of my giraffes. And once they cycle through, I'm then going to go ahead and add alt text as well. But what you'll find is as we keep going through here, I am going to have an issue where I only have three options for three photos and I want four. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a fourth carousel item so we can add in our fourth photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up and save it and we'll add that fourth item and customize this carousel next.